This little fellow that's looking at you <laughs> is probably responsible for getting most of us into this wonderful sport we call fishing. Well, it certainly did for me. Remember the first one you caught? Was it in a creek, on a pond bank? Were you fishing with your granddaddy? Or up under a shady tree, fishing with your daddy? Well, whenever or wherever, I bet it was a special time, and one you'll never forget. You know, these little scrappers are the kind of fish that can be caught almost year round by anyone from eight to 80. And what makes them so doggone much fun is the multitude of ways you can go about catching them. Now, believe me, there are many, but let's keep it simple. Remember when we looked at this little bantam weight and I said, it's the fish that probably is responsible for getting most of us hooked into this wonderful sport? Tell you what, <laughs> Let's journey back to those yesteryears and relive and discuss what most of us use. And if any of you beginners are watching, maybe y'all will learn a trick or two. You know, as time passed, we certainly did uh, learn a lot. But with each passing year, we all learned a little bit more about this game fish and how to catch him. But back a long time ago, we used uh, bigger hooks. We used uh, steel hooks, it seemed like. Large size hooks. We didn't have the Aberdeen hooks or the smaller type hooks. We used, uh, remember these big old plastic floats uh, that were, a fish would hit them and they just pull them across the top of the water. And of course, we'd yank because we'd miss the hook. Trying to a fish trying to pull this under. You ever try to push a, a beach ball down under the water? You know, it would go like this. It was just difficult to push under the water. Well, the same applies to a fish. That big cork has a lot of buoyancy, and a fish would try to pull it under, and it'd pop back up. And you'd say, you know, pull it under, take it, take it, take it. And it was just difficult for a, even a big bluegill to pull it under. He'd pull it down, it'd bob up. He'd pull it, and it'd bob up. And he'd try to take it, and it'd run across the top of the water. We used uh, heavier sinkers back then. Uh, a lot of the equipment we used, uh, the fishing poles that we used, we used a lot of zip poles. Our jigging poles were much heavier. You'd hold one for a long time and it was so weight forward. Uh, we didn't have uh, poles like we did today. We take rods today, they're extremely lightweight. They're not well balanced like they are now. They're not near as sensitive like they are now. The lines that we used, we're using lines that, even braids that are so sensitive. Uh, our monofilament lines, our lines are so much, so much better. They're so much more sensitive. They're better abrasion resistance. Our reels have better drag systems. They're lighter weight. Our equipment today is so much better than it is, or than it was back in those days. But what we have today is so much better. So as we move along with our discussion today, we're gonna to be discussing the bait, we're gonna be discussing bedding locations, we're gonna be discussing water temperature, and how water temperature and moon phases affect these tremendous little fish that millions of Americans love to fish for. And believe me, when I say millions of America, fishermen love to fish for them, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, let's talk about fish hooks. We talk about a, a fish hook. These wiry little things, the hook itself. Does a hook size style make a difference? Oh, yes, they do. Now, my choice in a hook when fishing with live bait, like a red worm for instance, when I'm using a red worm, my choice in a hook is a long shank, light wire Aberdeen. Now let me tell you why I like this hook. The reason I prefer the long shank is that they're so much easier to remove. These light wire hooks are extremely sharp and penetrate extremely fast. An example I always give is it's much easier 
to push a pin into a potato than it is a nail. Now my favorite size hook for bluegill is usually a long shank Aberdeen number six, like you're looking at now. If I want to add more bait to my hook, I'll go to a larger version of the same design, like this Aberdeen number four. I believe a bigger gap often gives me a better hook set and I can add more bait. You want to keep your bait healthy and lively for as long as possible. And these smaller diameter wire hooks do less damage to the worm. Also, if the fish swallows a bait, this long shank is so much easier to remove with a pair of needle nose pliers or with hemostats. Look at him. There he is. Boom. There's a big old bluegill right there. Pretty colored little fish. I think that float is. Ain't easy. It covers up. Oh, that bait fell out. Yeah. Going back home. Ready? Toodaloo. It's a known fact that the sunfish family, bluegill, green and long-eared sunfish, red ears, pumpkin seeds, red breast, and warmouth prefer a bait that's squirming on a hook, like a red worm. It's also important when hooking up, always let the ends of the worm dangle. Like I said, keep your worms healthy and lively as long as possible and use a light wire hook simply because they do the least amount of damage to the bait. Sunfish rely heavily on scent to locate a food source, so it's not surprising that the vast majority of these fish are caught on natural bait, and that's what makes red worms such a popular meal. They're easy to hook up, they don't bite, and they're clean. About the only thing that's dirty about them is the dirt they live in. Now most anglers would rather buy their bait than find it or dig it, especially since many retail outlets sell them. There he is. I can't get him out of there. That's a big shell cracker, I guarantee you. That's a horse there, he came out. Whoa. I'll tell you what, they make those surge. That's, that's, oh, look at the size of this one. Almost driven drag. Oh, yes, sir. I get these fish have got so many different names. Red ear. Of course, this red ear is not showing. It could be a female. But chinky pen, shell cracker. They're all in the sunfish family. Of course, a largemouth bass is in the in the sunfish family. They're nice. Alright, bye bye. Hey, are you a first timer? Here's how convenient it can be. Bait in a box, bait in a carton, bait to go. Just give me some hooks, corks, line, and sinkers, and a carton of worm to go. A quick and convenient worm purchase really makes it easy for first-time anglers. Or more likely, buy and carry worms makes it easier for taking first-timers fishing. Now, whether you're a single parent, grandparent, or guardian, if you are, be sure to read the labels and consider your purchase. Remember, if you're going for bigger fish like catfish, then you're going to need more boxes of red worms than you would for sunfish. And don't forget to match your hook size to your float with the size of the fish you're going after. Oh sure, a lot of folks don't like to handle worms, even some adults, and you know who you are. But trust me, they have no teeth and they don't bite and they're really not that dirty. 
They just come from the dirt they live in. Oh, you gotta trust me. When it comes to getting a little dirt on your hands, baiting hooks with a worm is always gonna be worth it when you see the smile on a child's or angler's face. Not only is it contagious, it'll be a memory that an angler will label as a keeper for life, regardless of what kind of fish it is. Wow, it's big. Gray sand, that is huge. Look at that. Can you help me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Look at him. I don't know if I can get my hand around that sucker. There we go. Look how big that is. Mm -hmm. All right, aren't you proud? Mm -hmm. Say hello. All right, say goodbye.